your home. <clears throat> yeah, folks, I'm here. It's Badger Lord here again. I decided, eh, maybe the music drone is not the thing that I want. Uh, I, uh, well, since we completed the Kevin Rus series, I'm not sure what I want to do next. Um, give me a second. I am, I'm going to edit my stream info. I'm not sure what I want to do next. But I can tell you this, uh, the Ukraine, um, the, the Kiev and Rus Civ that I was playing, very... That Civ game was much too easy. And that was on Prince setting as well, so I... I don't know, maybe I'm getting better at this game? I don't know. Hmm. But I'll tell you, I'm sure this is terribly surprising, but I actually think Colony Sim games are absolutely fascinating lately i've been playing i've been playing a colony sim called going medieval lately uh, and i've been watching a lot of rimworld videos if you don't know what rimworld is i highly recommend the channel pete complete pete complete it's a good channel if you want to see various games, he, he, he's a completionist, that is somebody who plays a game to its completion, or to what might be called a completion. <clears throat> and he's played a, a couple of 52-part series of RimWorld. <coughs> So I'm not really sure what I want to do next. Uh, I've, I've been doing that. I've also been playing Railroad Tycoon 2 as well, which is an interesting game. But if I try and do that, I'm not going to be able to look at chat because for the life of me, I've not been able to get the chat. I, I've not been able to window uh, Railroad Tycoon 2. I wish I knew why I want to. <laughs> Because I'd like to play it, because it is such a fun game, and it's an enjoyable game. You might have seen me play um, uh, Sid Meier's Railroads earlier, like a month or two ago. It's truly a good game, but... Oh. Railroad Tycoon 2 is much better. Not because it isn't prettier, but... I don't know, there's just something about the economy of Railroad Tycoon 2. It's more complex, it's more immersive. When you do stock market trading and things, you... You feel like you're really in a businessman's office from the 1800s. You really feel like a robber baron, and it's, 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 it's just awesome. It's incredibly... It's a very different feeling from Railroad Tycoon 3 and... Sid Meier's Railroads, which do feel a lot more like you're laying down train tracks and building a train set. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but kind of the whole financial side of it is really cool in Railroad Tycoon 2. In a way, it's not in the sequels. Aww. But unfortunately, we're not going to be able to play that until I figure out how to put it in a freaking window, because I don't know how. So I would do that, but rather than opine more and more about something I can't do at the moment, I need to think of something that I'm going to be playing. Mm. I could go back to Tropico, I guess. Mm. Or Valheim, or... Uh, frankly, I don't want to play one-player games or games where I'm... <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, I'm really liking the colony sim genre lately, and I think I want to stick with that. Um, I, 
I think, uh, give me a second while I, because I think, yes. Yeah, so we're going to, yeah, I think just for want of something else to do, we're going to go and build a monastery. I realize editing on the fly is not preferable, but I kind of don't care at the moment. Because I just need to think of something to do, I guess. Uh, colony simulator. Hmm. Yes, I, I know this is scintillating television. There we go. All right. Yeah, what the hell? Let's do it. Does mean I'm going to have to set up some things, but that's all right. I will tell you, I created my own custom setup, which, um... Okay, because the game going medieval is still in beta. Although it does uh, behave algorithmically more or less like RimWorld, which is a game I would love to get, but... I mean, it plus the DLCs is like fifth, like seventy bucks. I uh, yeah, I, I'm not doing that. But it never goes on sale below uh, ten percent, which is only it only drops it down to like thirty one bucks, which is like uh, that's still a lot of money for me. Uh. So I guess I'm just gonna have to wait for Going Medieval to get up to RimWorld. I mean, even RimWorld Beta 18. If you're wondering why I'm say, if you're wondering why I'm saying Beta 18, well, uh, the reason is because that is uh, uh, Pete completes first RimWorld uh, completionist. Uh, Span. Okay, what's going on here? I'm trying to... Hmm. Why is it not picking up? That's strange. As you can see, maybe, uh, you can see part of my... You can see part of OBS is running in it, and it just looks wrong. Can we try to fix that any? Will that help? Um, let's try that. Mm, no, that doesn't help anymore. That, that, that actually just makes it worse, I think. Uh, hmm. Maybe I have to get into a game in order for it to bend to my will. I... Okay. How about that? Is that any better? No. No, that's, that's very definitely not. Um, uh, it, uh, why are we making this difficult? This should not be so difficult. Okay, so it's on there. It's either that or it's going to be the calculator. Or the mail program. Why do I have a mail program running, I wonder? I... D uh, uh, hmm. How about that? No? Hmm. Perhaps I can't run Going Medieval either. This is very distressing. Hmm. Aha! There we go! Bingo! And I realize this looks blocky as feck, because this is running in 360p for you all, but... Uh, 
It is what it is. All right. There we go, though. All right. So I'll show you an example of what we're going to be doing here, because I already have a monastery that I've been working on in my free time uh, in between games of Civ 6. So I'm either starting this way or I'm going to start in some other smaller, smaller, probably smaller way. So there's the thing about going medieval. So it is kind of like RimWorld, but at this point, uh, the thing that makes it superior is its graphics, because it has multiple Z levels, unlike, well, yeah, let me show you what I mean. So by holding the control key and scrolling the mouse wheel, I can, let's pause it for a second, actually. Pressing the spacebar pauses it. Pressing one, two, three changes the speed. Pressing control and holding down or rolling up lets you change the height map to show more Z levels or to go down into, say, basements and that, like so. This is the main feature of Going Medieval that makes it superior to RimWorld at the moment. But aside from that, it's uh, it's pretty primitive at the moment. The tech tree is nothing special at the moment. Mainly, I mean, it's of course only going to be medieval technologies, but I mean, even then, most of them are just slightly better armors, shields. Um, okay, okay, fermenting alcohol will be really kind of cool later, but... Uh, eh. I mean, it's... You're basically only doing a few things. You're cooking, you're making alcohol, you're making medicine, and you're making ways to kill people, including ever more increasingly complex and powerful weapons, including swords, axes, maces. I mean, you can see them here. Bows, crossbows. Oh, and of course, ways to protect yourself. Shields and... Um, Helmets. I actually have some great helms now that I... But no plate armor, so it would be nice to have... But, okay, so the tech tree is pretty limited, so... Technological advancement isn't as engaging as I've seen it be in RimWorld, which has, like, several levels of technological advancement. Such as tribal stages, then medieval, then you get electricity, which brings you into the modern era, and so on and so forth all the way up to what are called so very aptly glitter worlds where technology rules everything and you trust technology to pretty much protect you and keep you all right whereas this this already pretty well developed monastery i mean it still is not remotely complete but i mean it has a wall around it it has several rooms most of these are sleeping quarters or small workshops I mean, you can tell what this is. I hope. This is a church. And this, this is... It's not official, but it's my coat of arms. <laughs> or about as close as I'm ever going to get to it. I don't have an official coat of arms, but way back in... The mid-2010s, uh, I played a game called Stronghold Kingdoms, and I made a shield that looked mostly like this. The gold represents God and the Trinity. The, the three points are the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. The Eucharist is this little round white circle with the red cross, the red cross symbolizing suffering. And by the way, I looked up heraldry symbolism. I don't remember what it all means, but I remember some of it. Blue, I believe, stands for hard work and red for sacrifice my original coat in stronghold kingdoms had two keys for the keys to the kingdom of heaven a common catholic symbol i'm a catholic as you might know i could only fit in one key i sure i surely could put in a custom prop but a silver key and a gold key both noble signs of some kind i'd need to look it up i would love to because it was intended to be the gospel in heraldry, which would have been really cool. But, eh, suffice to say, now. 
this church, kind of vague, pseudo-buttressing, very nice and all that. I only just finished this a couple of days in-game ago. Alright, and if we scroll down, we see that there's stairs and doors that lead to a mezzanine, or a mezzanine, however you will, that look down into a gallery that has three different... Well, they're not altars, they're shrines, and they're not Christian shrines, per se. The Restitutionist, as the title of... There's two religions in this game, which is more than the base game of RimWorld. There's the Restitutionists, which is something like Christianity, vaguely. It's very... Mm, it's very oriented around crosses and candles and... Okay, so these are the shrines, of course, and... Yeah, I'm... <laughs> and, uh, they also... Each, uh... Each religion also has some decorations. Only one set, though. This is obviously some kind of a scroll with writing and more candles and pointy bits. <coughs> the other religion is the Oak Brethren, which are symbolized by these types of shrines, which you can kind of see an outline there. Not really, but it's very totemistic. It looks like kind of an Ooga Booga totem or something. <laughs> it represents paganism. And to be fair, I mean, it's it's pretty tasteful, I think. I actually kind of like putting up Oak Brethren decorations in some of my places. Because, I mean, it's kind of... I mean, that kind of... That can kind of work. The eight branches kind of remind me of Buddhism more than... Paganism and certainly more than Christianity, but I, there's some elements in it that are that have some truth in them that are worth considering. Okay, here, yeah, yeah, in my great hall, you can see there's something in this. I don't know what it means to the developers, but all right. And of course, as I say, there's workshops. This is our little library over here. Stills for making alcohol. You can make rough wine, which I do, because, uh, well, there's no grapes in this game, but grapes are used to make official church wine, but red currants are the nearest thing, and there's no wheat, there's only barley in this game, but, and that may not matter very much to people who are not Catholic, but you know what? Uh, wheat and Grapes are symbolically very important in Catholicism. Suffice to say, though, there's plenty to farm. Actually, I wouldn't be surprised if some of the patterns of this game, like the things you can farm, the things you can brew, are based off of some of the medieval mods that I've seen for RimWorld. Because even though I don't have the game, I am fascinated by it, and I would love to get it someday. You might also have noticed this big red vein over here. This, in case you didn't see, is iron. You can literally mine it up and get iron nuggets, which you fashion into... Iron ingots, which you fashion into weapons and armor and that sort of thing. Yeah, so, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So... I think you get the gist of it. This is the kind of thing that we will be making, and that I have been making. And we're going to tell some stories here. What kind of stories? I don't know. But there are going to be stories of valorous men who fight to protect and serve each other. And that is the sort of thing that I think I am drawn to in Colony Sims. Seeing the foibles... Uh, foibles? No, actually, no. Not the, not the faux pas and mess-ups, but the, the valor and the courage and the death to self of people in a harsh environment. And you know what? Just for the camera, because I usually like to play peaceful or standard... We're gonna... we're gonna go hard. We're gonna do standard, because, uh, enemy raids are interesting, but, 
Uh, so are Environmental Bites. It's the closest thing that this game has to Randy Random. And if you've never heard of Randy Random, he is a meme in RimWorld. You have got to see some RimWorld playthroughs. If you do not know who Randy Random is, you will love him. <laughs> because he makes the games insane. But Standard Mode put up to... Difficult? We will see how that goes. I'm, I admit, fully, I am a pussy. I don't know what I'm doing. Alright. So the two default ones that come with this game are A New Life, where you get three colonists and a bunch of starting kit. And a range of different colonists. You get The Lone Wolf, which is probably the hardest so far. Um... And you don't get very much to defend yourself with. And then this one I made myself, and it's the one that the monastery I just showed you was patterned on. But anyway, what we're going to do here... I think... So I do want to play for story. I want to play for character development in my colonists. Not just for a survival challenge. But maybe a hermit going out... I've tried playing that before, and it's not really all that interesting, but... I am curious what will happen. I think we do want to go with that. Now, you will notice one of the limitations of this game as far is that it does not have... It does not really have water, for one thing, and it only has one type of climate with three different variations. So it's kind of a temperate, quasi-European climate, which is kind of boring after a while, but... And that's kind of why I started that particular monastery in in a mountain because I hadn't played there and it would definitely be more challenging. I think for defense purposes and also <coughs> for the sake of trade as well as to try a different sort of challenge because having access to metal and limestone has been very helpful as far as building is concerned, I think I might try the valley because although, yes, you can farm a lot, uh, because they recently added seeds, which is a completely different issue, I'm not even going to get into that. I'll, I'll show you. We'll just uh, go into it. But I think farming will be a different kind of challenge now. We're going to want someone who is capable of construction, and this guy has a passion in that. He has a passion in medicine, a double passion in medicine. Very good. A rustic miner. Let's read about him. Godwin Black. Godwin had done his time in the low peak lead fields and the Welsh mines of the Black Prince, pale and shunning daylight like many miners. This dude ain't pale. He's like Hispanic or something. Anyway, Godwin had hollow eyes and headaches. Glistening veins of gold caressed his dreams. Following the plague, Godwin had learned to survive on foraged hedgerow fare, supplemented with occasional stolen egg or trapped hair. Godwin could make a meal from dandelion, primroses, or stewed acorns. His eyes were painful hollows, always hungry. <laughs> Hmm, I do not know how I feel about that. Does mean he's lived through some shit, though. I'll say that. <coughs> he has a passion in tailoring. That could be useful. Wild flax seeds could enable us to make a very decent profit from trade. And enable us to get good equipment. What is my real objective here? It's to make a place where... People can come and live for the gospel. I 
I feel like that's very difficult with colony sims such as they are designed. It's difficult to influence the societies and the world around you the way you would in, say, Civilization VI. I mean, as you saw in the last playthrough, and if you haven't, go look it up on my YouTube channel. It's long, but it's kind of worth it. We won with a religious victory, which is basically passing your beliefs on through the world until everyone was, in the case of that game, Eastern Orthodox, because Poland had already taken Catholicism. It's kind of difficult to do that sort of thing in this game. Or in other colony sims. I kind of wish you could. It's kind of a pity to me that you can't. There's probably a mod somewhere. Not for this game, unfortunately. But... Maybe somewhere. As for this particular game, <clears throat> what I need is somebody who's capable of construction. Check. Culinary skill, mm, uh, well, Rustic does help, but his culinary is pretty low. So, I uh, can't say I'm a fan of that. Intellectual is low, which means he's not going to be able to access agriculture for quite a while, because you need to research that in this mode. Yeah, we're, we're going to re-roll this. Also, he's a decent marksman, but he has no melee skill and no passion for it, so yeah, he can't defend himself. Yeah, we're going to re-roll. Okay, decent melee, decent construction, decent intellectual. Okay, this guy's more like what we're looking for here. A tireless army cook. An army marches on its stomach, and Birnstan knew how to keep the, camp the campfires burning and soldiers' bellies full. His meals weren't exactly gourmet, but Bernstein was a keen butcher and could fillet the opposition pretty skillfully in retreat. In the wake of death and terror, Bernstein got the knack of carpentry fashioning coffins for plague victims, later nailing whole families into their homes to die. Ooh, I did not know that he worked for the Chinese army. Ooh, ooh. Next, Bernstein built trebuchets in the War of Succession. Fac et alquid operis uit semper te diabolus in veniat occuparum. I do not speak Latin. I wish I did. I might look that up later, but not right now. And the cauliflower of... The cauliflower of him? I could be... Bernstein spent so long in the vegetable garden as a child that his mother of Norman stock affectionately called him cabbage, as is the French way. To this day, Bernstein still has a green thumb, especially for brassicas, i.e. cabbages and um, cauliflowers, broccoli, and Brussels sprouts. I would like Brussels sprouts in the game. I know they're not popular, but honestly, Brussels sprouts are quite good. Even just steamed, I like them. He's a dainty thing, though. Oh, he's not gonna like where he's gonna be, then. And a hedonist. Yeah. Not to mention he's an oak brethren, which kind of goes against my role-playing strategy here. Or my role-playing purpose, I should say. Okay. So we're gonna roll a bit... Okay, construction, check, intellectual, check. No marksmanship, which is unfortunate, but he can melee with things, which will be useful. <coughs> he may not be able to hunt, per se. Oh, frick, another oak brethren. Sheesh. Now, I do know that I can just customize him if I like, but I don't want to do that. I want to roll until I get somebody who can construct, is intellectual, vaguely restitutionist, very good, can shoot a bow, can swing something, not very well, but that'll do, is a tailor, ooh, uh, can't farm, that's okay, he will learn, he will learn how to farm, he's not going to learn quickly, but he will learn. All right, 
And this is the last one we're going to read, because I think we're going to go with Milton Strong here. Milton loved getting stuck into a complex project. He spent many years crossing Europe in search of instruction. Milton understood how to create gravity-defying structures with stone and iron, taught by the nameless, genius cathedral builders. Totally look up, by the way, uh, the game version, I can't speak for the novel, The Pillars of the Earth. The adventure game is quite beautiful, and Tom Builder in that game, he is hes well done. Actually, all the characters have, are well done. Uh, it's been a while since I've played it, but I highly recommend it. Following the plague, there was no one to tend to the animals. Hogs ran wild, cattle starved in the winter fields. It was after Milton came upon a lifeless mare beside her newborn foal that he decided to shepherd whatever beasts were needful. So a caring master builder, highly intellectual, carpenter, construction, and animal handling. There are no animals to handle as yet, but that's okay. This guy has just enough. And we're going to try and make this interesting. I don't know exactly what we're going to do, but I have a sense of some things that we are going to need to do in order to survive and to go from there. Survival is, of course, always top priority in these things. All right, let's read the story. Lone Wolf. Through a blizzard, the last hunting party of the year returns. One member is missing, presumed dead. Far from what passes for civilization, Milton is on his own. He grits his teeth and resolves to build a home in the wilderness to shelter from the biting cold. Only so mm. The only sound is the distant call of wolves. Milton is confident, defiant even. I will make this work. I will take my share of the land. I will build there, and I will defend it. Many have tried, some have fallen, beset by bandits, defeated by drought, yet many have also prevailed. I must have faith. The place I found will stand centuries from now. My descendants may be there still. After many travails, he arrived in a valley with golden plains cut through by a snaking river. For Milton, it conjured visions of bountiful harvests, song, and wine, and I just clicked off of it. And I've already done the tutorial. Why do I have that? Okay, we're going to pause that quickly. Uh, eh, eh, game. Show tutorial tips. No, thank you. All right. Anyway, we're going to dive in here. And we're going to start by pausing. Okay, and we start right next to some herbs. Herbs make very good medicine. We also start next to some red currants, which are... <gasps> Excuse me. Extremely useful. Lots of wood to be had. Obviously the thing we want to be building with. Plenty of grass and dirt. Perfect for farming on. Uh, little piles of clay, limestone. Here and there. Yeah, just a little mound of clay over here. I don't think there is any limestone around here. To, uh... No, I think it's all clay at the moment. Maybe if I dig down. Oh, not to mention mushrooms. No, this thing this thing is a valley, and a valley forest by all appearances. So. Ah, a little bit of salt. Okay, where's our man at? Milton! Okay, Milton. So you got a little wood for building a campfire. Let's get you equipped up, my friend. Um, get a ranged weapon. Actually, shields are unnecessary with a ranged weapon. There are no machine guns, so you can't really have a shield now, can you? Uh, put on apparel, armor. Yep. Come on. Okay. Yeah, 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 what are you doing, bro? Go and equip some things. Get, a, get that bow, get that cap on. Alright, he's got a few meals. Nowhere to store resources. And he's gonna need somewhere to sleep. Hmm. Let's find some dead trees. 
or some very mature ones like that one and this one. Yeah, let's trim those down and build our first little shelter. And we're also gonna get some hay. And apparently some mushrooms. And we're going to change the schedule here because, well, this is how I do things. Actually, I will hold off for a bit on changing that. I usually change it, I usually change my monastic schedule so that they have time for prayer, but that's simply not an issue at the moment because, well, again, survival is. survival. Uh, survival uberalis at the moment. Awesome! Alright. This is going well. Okay, three. Four. Nine. Sixteen. Alright. We're getting all of this stuff because we're going to need it in order to... And of course his low botany means he's gonna botch a few times, but it, it, it has to be done. <clears throat> okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Since it's gonna be early in the year yet, and mining's not gonna be that important, for the simple reason that we don't need cold storage in the winter, obviously, and animal handling is unimportant. We're gonna just put that at nothing for the moment. Harvesting. Harvesting and growing are uh, probably just cutting plants and harvesting at the moment are gonna be important. I'll put them at two. But the most important thing is probably constructing. Because we need to get a shelter up. We need to get our cold storage up sooner rather than later, but that can wait for the moment. Right now, just having a roof over our heads is the most important thing, I think. And towards that end, we're gonna put up a little shack here. And that seems small, but that's 20 wood, and each one requires 5 pieces of wood, so that's a hundred logs there. That means I'm gonna need to chop down at least three trees. Uh, two, if I include the wood that I've got there, but I'm going to need yet more, so... Actually, let's see what he does with this. And mind you, that's not even with... Actually, yeah... There is one other thing that I'm going to need, too, of course. And that's right. A door. Very important, that. Best place to put a door. Probably right next to the food. In which case, I'm also going to rethink this mining area. We'll get back to that in a moment. I probably shouldn't think too far ahead. We'll put a window in, not because I need it, just because I feel like I feel like it'd be good. We'll do a wicker roof to make use of all of those sticks that we're going to have. And while he goes and harvests some things, some more hay. Oh, actually that might be enough hay at the moment. Focus, man. Focus. Um, <coughs> that hay has how long before it... It has 41 days because it's cold and because it's on the dirt. It'll be fine. Most everything here will be fine until, until I actually build... So while he builds, I'm going to go ahead and modify the walls some, 
because that is a feature of this game, and it allows you to build, well, decent-looking housing uh, things. Uh, let me show you what I mean. Okay, you see that? Now let me rotate this, because you can do that. Yes! Oh yeah, that looks nice. This, not so much. But that's why you rotate it. And then you can do this, and this, and... You know, it frankly would probably be better if I... Did he just lose that tree? I think he might have lost that tree due to his low botany skill. No worries, there's plenty of trees out here. So after he trims that one down... Which is gonna take just a bit... Okay, cool, cool. And he's gonna go into our packaged meals because he's hungry. And that's what he's got. We will have him harvest some red currants. Red currants are a simple food, but they're all right. <clears throat> they're very tart. Not the most appealing thing, but they do. They do the job. And he's just building a little cabin here. It's nice. But he realizes he needs to get this up. Uh, har Did I put that up as one? Because it should not be. Okay, focus, man. Focus. Actually, I'm going to call him over here. To chop this field maple before it goes any more mature. Because as important as it is to get food, uh, he needs a roof over his head. So that he can sleep tonight. Without being in the cold. And this tree is old enough that it's going to go dead soon, and so... Best that I use it for resources PDQ. One unfortunate problem that will make this kind of interesting and less defensible than the mountain monastery I made is the fact that there's a lack of stone around here. Stone is very useful for making durable fortifications, especially out of limestone bricks. Wood is not, uh, it's not as durable. Limestone bricks have 800 hit points. This wooden wall only has 200. So, and this little cabin will offer very little in the way of defense. This is pretty much only just so that he has a roof over his head at the moment. But Milton's doing it. By the way, let's take a closer look at him for a second here. He's age 23, and his birthday is the 8th of autumn. There are four seasons, as well as four, I guess you could say, months. Each of them is 12 days long. Spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Okay, I know, I know, you need red currants. And those red currants are going to last for the season. You know what? No, no, actually. Yeah, no, let's, um, let's let him keep building. This house will serve one other purpose as well. So aside from the wicker roof, 
and the wicker floor, which I'm about to put in. Ah. There is one other thing that we're going to need here. And not just a bed, but also a stockpile. And that stockpile, with the floor under it, will be able to hold anything perishable. That means food, that means clothing and war, f uh, war materials like that shield and spear that are sitting out there. Two wood. That's a good amount of wood there. Yeah. He said jokingly. So I've cut down quite a few trees in order to make this cabin. Actually, on account of the fact that he still doesn't have a house yet, I'm just going to clear out his schedule. Let him keep building until he has everything together. We're going to leave those trees alone and go after more mature trees, older trees. How's he doing? He is still competent, so he'll be good for another hour or two for, for now. We don't need tremendous amounts of wood, so maybe I should target the best trees. That tree's actually still got a ways before it becomes an issue. Um, same with that one. These are still fine. This tree is dead, however, and it's halfway through its life. Oh, that one should definitely be chopped up soon, too. Because once that dead tree falls over, considering it's at 93% of its being dead, it'll just fall over and produce no resources. And we need wood, as much wood as we can muster. So we're not quite done yet with building this house. And on top of that, we still need a bed. So it's going to be a very, very late night for Milton here. For our Mr. Strong. But he's just going to need to fight off the exhaustion until he has a roof over his head. Because this is the valley and there is nowhere to hide. Which is the other problem with the valley. See, you could dig out something in a mountain. I didn't do that, but that's because I like traditional architecture. If I were playing lone in a mountain, though, that's probably, probably the best thing to do, is just dig out a hillside. So we are almost there. The only other thing that we need for the moment... Okay, so he's going to build some more floor tiles because that is... It is of secondary importance, really. But he may as well, since he can. And since he still has some consciousness left. Actually, you know... But before he gets exhausted... I'm going to tell him to make his bed so that he can sleep. Just for a bit. So once he builds this hay sleeping spot, he has his own bedroom. And since his schedule is set to anything, he can sleep whenever he likes. Okay, bud. Um, haul these to the stockpile, if you please. I 
Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and schedule you so that... Construction is third most and hauling is first most because you've got more or less everything you need at the moment. But hey, you do you. Don't let me tell you what your business is, bud. Oh, I will do this, though. Convalescing will let him heal up. And that's gonna be mighty important. You should not do medicine because you do not know what you're doing. Okay, are you going to sleep yet? Okay, he is good. And with a quiet cabinet, he... Cabinet? With a quiet cabin, he sleeps until he is well-rested. Alright. And day two dawns, and he eats raw red currants, I think. Either that or prepared meals, one of the two. Okay, good. And how are we doing today, Milton, here? You're still feeling optimistic? Good. I'm glad you're feeling nice and defiant. Go show that world who's boss and show the world that you got what it takes. I dare ya. Iron Nuggets, we should keep that in mind for later. So yes, he has survived his first night. He is determined to live here. I'm, I am very pleased with him. But we are not out. The we are not out of the woods yet. However, well, evidently, I mean, we're surrounded by trees here. No matter how little foliage is on him. We're just going to go ahead and collect whatever resources we can in order to get them all under our roof. He's going to go finish up that floor so that the contents of the stockpile don't decay, because at the moment they're not presently located on flooring. Because they're located on the dirt, apparently they're more likely to decay on account of the ground type. Because that's just how this game works. Ah! Feck. It's not what I meant to do, but uh, that's all right. For the moment, that's all right, because that allows me to relay it. And to check off waste as well, because we don't need waste there. We don't need waste there. All right. So he's going to go ahead and harvest some more berries, just so that he has some kind of food to work with. Right, and since, and while he's doing that, I'm also going to think about what, what next? I think our next priority should be to build a small wall so that he has a courtyard of sorts. It's maybe a little too small here. Uh, so I'll do that. Yeah, and we'll put that there. And yes, that'll do. So we'll have just a wee little courtyard. And we'll put a campfire right in the middle of it so that he can cook.
He's going to need to research at some point, but this is not a concern of the moment. Right now, I'm focusing on getting very, very basic defenses up. A wall with a staircase <coughs> will provide a very basic amount of defense so that he can overlook anything that might try and kill him. And I'm going to have him chop up some more aging and dead trees. So that he can finish his fortification. I might bump up the speed a bit because I realize this might be getting a bit boring as well. Boring for you, not for me. I like this. He's getting his stuff together. He's making it work. I can appreciate that. There's something nifty about that. The only other thing I think I can add to this... I can add crenellations to it. Well, or marilons of some kind, anyway. Uh, maybe I will do that, too, though. But, um... I'm not sure that he has the required construction skill. Let me see here. Mm, he needs to get up a couple points before he can put down stick traps. One other thing I should build. It just occurred to me. Well, you can see it up here in the corner. I need to build a research table. But instead of building it up here, since I have a basic stockpile and since I more or less have everything else looked for at the moment, I think now is a good time to start digging our, ugh, digging our cold storage as well. So once he finishes with his current construction, which I think is more important. And once he finishes with harvesting, which is doubly important to me. Actually, I do realize I should probably have cutting plants be priority one for the moment. So that he can finish building this, and once he's done that, he can begin digging out cold storage. But for the moment, that can wait. Oh, yes, I should keep that in mind, too. He's going to need at least four meals for himself. There's one other thing he's going to need as well, and I haven't I hadn't thought of that yet. Um He's going to need a brazier so that it can keep himself warm. Because his house is only going to be so warm. On his own body heat. It's not even above freezing in there. So I need to find him. Some stone so that he can build a small brazier for himself. Either stone or clay, one of the two. I'm going to need to find... That'll do. Haul that to the stockpile so that you can build yourself a brazier for keeping yourself warm, Milton. <coughs> Bingo. Uh, we'll put that right at the foot of his bed, and that'll keep him warm. I'm 
gonna take a little bit of time to change his roof a bit. That's nice. That'll do fine. Maybe I will do a bit of that just to change things up while he does his thing. That looks kind of nice. I kind of like that. Alright. Trees are coming down. He's going to have plenty of wood for the building of things. And he will have the wall up around his base soon. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and speed things up a bit. He's also getting a little unhappy as well. He needs... He needs booze. And he needs religious activities, so we should build him a shrine and a... Bagaman table. Because that initial optimism is not... It's going to last for the better part of a week, but it's, um... It's getting on. It's, it's, it's getting a bit late. So he's been working through part of the night. Got plenty of hay for more sleeping spots. Not that he needs it. Uh, them. I should have him work something he's passionate about. He's good with hunting, carpentry, tailoring. Mm. Trouble is, he would need to research in order to do some crafting, because he can't do any of that at the moment. I may put a table out there right up against the wall, but... Actually, no. Okay. I need to have him focus a bit. What am I saying? He is focusing. He's focusing on hauling things so that he can... discharge his duty properly. Alright, the only thing he has going for himself at the moment is... His initial optimism. But otherwise, he's just deprived of everything at the moment. I'm gonna have him stop hauling for a bit. Because, yeah, he is just... he is just unhappy at the moment. Or he's gonna be unhappy. Fortunately, his building is going pretty well. Alright, and the stockpile now has everything that it needs to protect the resources under it. The only problem is, with the brazier on in his room, his fruit is still going to rot. But not that quickly, thankfully. It's still got 20 days before it does so. His room's only 44 degrees uh, warm at the moment. 
due to a breathtaking 6.1 degrees negative in Fahrenheit. I wonder what that is in Celsius, but I'm American, unfortunately, so I, I couldn't honestly tell you. Sorry. For some reason, it's even colder inside the wall, so... On the outside, not even on the wood, it's negative 8.2, but it's negative 12. Winters are obviously very cold. Much colder than they are presently. And yes, that is kind of concerning for me. What isn't, however, is that he's digging out this dirt very quickly, admirably quickly, and soon we'll be able to dig out. And once he digs out this next little bit, we'll be able to make a staircase and dig out a cellar so that he can have cold storage finally. Wait, ooh, crap, that's not what I wanted to do. Um, uh, what's the thing I wanted to do? Uh, yes, 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 that's it. Um, I want to dig this out. It's very, very good that I'm able to do this. So dig here, and then just dig under here. Hopefully that doesn't impact the integrity of my floors. Uh, just in case, I might not dig all of it out right now. I might need wooden beams before I can do that. <clears throat> That'll still do nicely, though. And it looks like it's not going to take long for him to do this. Looks like he's got plenty of resources by which to do this. And enough building experience too, and soon he'll be able to make stick traps as well, which will be quite useful. Should I have him cook? I mean, he does have decent cooking after all. And plenty of red currants as well, I suppose. And no more meals. You know what? I'm gonna have him make some things to eat. So that he can actually eat decent meals. Cause he's, um, he's getting a bit moody. And until I have that cold storage, I can't move all of this stuff down. And some of this doesn't matter. I mean, that's not going to decay for a year. Honestly, that really doesn't matter. But those red currants, I want them to stay as fresh as they can. That really shouldn't be saying very much. Fortunately, he's able to cook up some more red currant pies right quick. And he goes ahead... Wait. Oh. No, he made stew? Red currant stew? That's weird. And that's not going to stay very fresh for very long, but... At least he didn't just eat raw food. Which is a mercy. Alright, so survival is coming slowly but surely. Plenty of red currants yet to be had. I wonder if there are still mushrooms lying around that I could take advantage of. I know there are herbs lying around as well. Is that little patch still there? 
We should harvest those as well. But maybe I should wait. Also, why did you harvest without hauling? That just makes no sense, man. There is a deer here. We could try and hunt that, but honestly, the red currants are providing enough food at the moment. I'm going to have him harvest as many of those as he can. But it's not a high priority, or it should not be one anyway, uh, because he's got enough food at the moment. And because these red currants are going to rot, uh, if I get too many of them, they're just not going to be useful if I get too many at once. Actually, I think what I may go ahead and do here is mine the whole thing out anyway. Whoa, no, 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 don't do that. Don't do all that. Holy crap, man, no. But do mine that out and, um... Put a pole underneath, just... Or do put a pole? Eh, no, he's, he's doing fine. <sighs> well, I'm getting tired of just waiting here. And frankly, I think he's getting very bored. Actually, I know he is, because... He's been deprived of entertainment and religious activities and booze. He's he's not happy, and his um he's going to be very annoyed soon unless we do something for him. storage is coming along though and once we've dug it all out all right now that we've dug it all out okay now that we've dug it all out, I'm going to deconstruct this stockpile, make him haul everything down, but more importantly than that, I'm going to construct his first leisure activities. First, uh... First, a bagaman table. What do you mean it can't be placed there? Probably because there's all that crap in the way. Not a problem, though. Rangy Hawker empties their pack, spreading a selection of oddments on a linen cloth on the ground. Oi boy and so things that take my fancy on the road, they say with a crooked smile. Take a look if you like. This traveler shall be in soon, I'm sure, but for the moment, what I need to focus on is hauling things. There's no shortage of things to haul, so that I can trade with him soon enough. Oh, how is our man's speech craft? It's, um... Okay, it appears to be pretty modest at the moment, so... Okay. Yeah. So because I don't have everything up yet... 
But because I do still want to trade with him, and probably even that spear that I've got, to be perfectly frank. Because I don't think I'm going to be using it. If I need to defend myself, I'm going to do it from behind these walls. That's the only thing that makes sense to me at the moment. That being the case, um... But unfortunately, it doesn't look like he's in the market for such a thing. Which is a pity. Oh! Oh, I know how I got that stew. That's from the mushrooms that I gathered. Okay. So I'll do this for him. I'll sell, a, I'll sell those two stews that I got. And... Mm, I can't sell anything else because this trader doesn't want anything else. But I might just get one mead. That might be all I can suitably get. He is with the church. That is their banner. You don't really learn about such things until you get a cartography table. Not that it matters very much, except that certain traders, I suspect, have certain types of goods that they're available. I shouldn't worry too much about it at the moment, though, because I can't afford too much. Also, uh, due to Mr. Strong's complete incompetence with plants, it's kind of pointless to get beets, which require a very high botany, or barley, which... I think also require a decent amount of botany. I think this will have to do for the moment. We're going to make it a little... We're going uh, We're going to proffer a bit more to the Church of the Third Coming so that we earn a little more favor with them so that they offer us more fair prices in the future. Yes, that's the name of this alignment, the Church of the Third Coming, which is odd. But now we get our guy some mead. He doesn't need a drink. He's a bit tipsy. And he drank a good mead. It's not a good beer, because mead is not beer. Mead is made with honey. Beer is not. At least I've never heard of a beer made out of honey. I wouldn't be surprised if there were such a thing. I've just never heard of it. <coughs> Alright. But this is a good start. It's starting pretty much like all colony survivals in their onset. This guy is a decent... This guy, whatever his goals may be, is just beginning eking out a living. And he's trying to survive the elements, and he's doing alright for the moment. There is one thing I want to check before I do much more construction. Okay, the stability of the floor here is important. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I can look at it quite the way I would like to. If the stability gets to two or one, I get rather concerned that I should probably put something underneath of it so it doesn't collapse. It's not going to collapse immediately, of course, but... You know what? I think I will harvest some herbs after I cut this tree down. Because although I'm sure to botch it, if I do actually manage to get some herbs, I could probably trade them. If our trader friend is still here, which he might not be. Okay. Where? 
where is he? He's off there somewhere. Let me see if I can sell these herbs to him, because herbs might be valuable and might be able to get us something slightly better than we had before. <clears throat> True, our guy is cold, but it, it might be worth it. Okay. Herbs are not worth as much as I thought they were, but they're still... That's still worth a bit. Uh, what could we buy with that? One barley. Mm, that doesn't strike me as very useful. Buying that stew back doesn't strike me as useful either. I, do, I think I would still like to try and trade with this guy, but maybe not. Maybe I don't need to. Maybe what I need to do... Actually, no. I can see exactly what I need to do. I forgot that one thing about cold storage is you still need to put tiles underneath of it. And I need to put some wood planks down there. Because otherwise my food's going to rot. Otherwise, anything that's stored down here is gonna last forever and a day. Once I put down the appropriate tiles. And any flooring will do. So long as there is flooring underneath of it. See right there? That red currant pie was going to expire in less than a week, and now it actually has some life in it. Okay, but I've put this off for far too long. It's time to build this bagaman table. Resource unable to deliver. My ass, come on. I've been having you chop trees all freaking day. So here's what we're gonna do. It's highly unlikely that we're gonna be able to chop this before it goes dead. But I'm gonna try. Saplings are worth something. Hey, nice. Now, I don't understand how Milton gets anything out of playing Bagaman alone, but, well, he certainly seems to. Maybe it's just having some game pieces. I've had days like that. I used to play Magic the Gathering, which, if you've never heard of it, is a card game where you pretend to be kind of a wizard who's in charge of various lands and can summon a lot of magical creatures. It's, it's a fun game after its fashion. I'm constructing something else? What else could I be... Oh, yeah, floor tiles. Of course. How silly of me. 
Well, with that, the merchant is gone. There's not much more to be said at the moment, I guess. I still can't brew anything at the moment, because the thing that I need to do that is a research table, which will allow me to research many things that I need. For the moment, though, not much else to do. The only other thing that I want to do is to build a shrine. Because, again, this guy is nominally... I mean, he's obviously not a religious hermit, but he is... He is religious, and he is, for the moment, a hermit. So, some kind of a devotional shrine to the Church of the Restitution in this game is going to be in his favor and is going to keep him well balanced since he can't brew anything to drink. So, all right, we've got his survival sorted. The real question is, where are we going to take him once we've sorted... Now that we have sorted his survival, I should say. What's... What is Milton Strong's life after this? What more is there to do than to build a cabin in the woods? The question, of course, will be answered partially by having other colonists come in. But is there anything more to the story? Is there anything we want to do here? As we read in the text before we got in, part of the idea is making something that's going to stand the test of time. I'm very intrigued what we should possibly do. And of course it should be no surprise to you that a church or a monastery is definitely one consideration I have, but that depends on who our Milton runs into. If he runs into a woman, we could end up with something very different. If he runs into a pagan as well, who knows what will end up happening. Take no offense, by the way. Actually, what? Oh, bud, why are you still hauling things? Fuck's sakes, go to bed. Okay. If you're not going to do that... Okay, good. He was beginning to lose consciousness there. You just saw that. I saw that, certainly. So I'm glad I got him before he did something stupid. If that's not proof to him that there's a god, I don't know what will be. Uh, at any rate, though. His initial optimism has a couple of more days before he's done. And frankly, I think it's been well served. He's had just about everything that he needs. The only thing that he needs is some better clothes. And unfortunately, we cannot do that for him yet. Howling of Wolves. That limestone could be useful, but we don't have any use for it just yet. This wooden shrine is the final thing that we can do for him without any further technology. 
but for now it looks like his only thing to do is to survive the winter. And so far he's doing all right. He can meet all of his needs, except to getting a decent bed and getting decent clothing. I hope we run into a trader who has better clothing next time. Flax will be an important step in that, but uh, there are many steps ahead that have to come first. If I were going to end it here, this would be a pretty good chapter to stop at, but I am not Pete Complete. I do a two-hour stream. There are many other things that will be steps in the ultimate completion of a final base. The next thing I think I'm going to do... is to stockpile wood so that we can build constructions. The material in question I'd like him to stockpile, again, wood, but also sticks and hay. Ah, uh, maybe not hay, not right there. Clay, yes. Let's pick something that rhymes. Basically, construction material. We'll put that right outside the wall. So that he doesn't keep hauling things down to the basement. Uh, I, uh, uh, I'll decrease the priority of this stockpile. Oh, wait, no, it's already decreased as low as it can get. I'll increase the priority of this stockpile, rather. Meanwhile, let's chop down decently mature trees, above 50%, especially ones that are over 70%, as well as dead trees. The older a tree gets, the less likely we will be able to harvest saplings from it. Because the older a tree gets, the more likely it's liable to go dead. Though, of course, we did manage to harvest a mature tree at 99.5% before it lost its sapling. So certainly nothing is impossible. But Milton is pretty pleased with himself. True, he's not joyful. He's not close to joyful, but he's getting there. He's much higher than he was earlier. You saw he was below 40% earlier. Now he's at 62% because he does have a bed. It is uncomfortable, but it is a bed. His optimism will be wearing off in a couple of days. So we should be careful. And we should attend to our next challenge. The next thing we need to attend to... ...that we are capable of doing... ...is building a room so that we can have a research table. I will also put the butchering table in there at the same time, simply to save space. But aside from that, it's, it's not really... Those two rooms are not supposed to be in the same place, I think is what I'm trying to say. But it'll do.
We'll change the details so that it doesn't look so janky, of course. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. We also don't need to put a ground type on this because of our cold storage. I mean, we don't need to put a floor on it because of our cold storage. I might choose to do so anyway, but uh, it's not a high priority. On account of all things being, well, what they are. Hay or sticks? That is the question. Should I build the roof out of hay or sticks? I think sticks. And we'll just put a butt crease in there. <laughs> yeah, just gonna make a big old butt out of the roof, I guess. Hee <laughs> hee. Butt cheeks. Hee. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I am juvenile. Because there's not much else to consider at the moment. So why would Milton be building a research plant? Why would he be building any of this at all? Let's give him a backstory to think of. <coughs> well, being lost by his hunting caravan and determined to survive, he's also determined to make wherever he is into the best thing that he can. And he sees the best way of doing that is learning. How can I build something truly grand? And how can I protect myself? And how can I make myself happier while I'm trying to do all this? And he thinks about doing all of this again because he comes from a civilized group of people. But also because he has just lived... Almost a week without adequate facilities. And even now, what does he have? He has a pathetic game of Bagaman to play with. Because he's never played any other game in his life. He doesn't know what he wants. He wants to think of as many things as he can so that he can, you know, maybe have a little more fun in his life. And maybe, just maybe, because he's... A small bit of civilization out in the wilderness. Maybe somebody will pay attention to him. Such as Emelina here. Emelina practically crawled into Rotherhithe, which is the name of this place because I didn't set that like an idiot. She appeared hale and well fed, yet appeared stricken by some uncanny malaise. Pins in flesh, pins mock death, she whispered hoarsely. There had been rumors that Queen Isabella employed a necromancer. Would you dare take Amelina in? Well, what's the issue with our potential colonist? Okay, she's... Okay, so she's not an Oak Brethren. She's a, of a restitutionist alignment. You can see that because... Well, you saw that bar over there shows that she is aligned with the Oak Brother, uh, uh, with the, the Restitutionists. If it were blue on the left, it would be the Oak Brethren. So, okay. Uh, spinning Inkeep, about our age as well. Uh, big on carpentry, all right on construction, or has a passion for construction. Uh, a decent miner, and a marksman. Hmm. Okay. I wonder how she is at melee. She has a passion for it anyway. That could be useful. And she has a couple of perks as well. Ah, uh, what the hell? Oh, and uh, what are we to expect? An archer and a marauder. Okay, so we'll be one for one. Sure. Okay. And 
and uh, she has wounds. That's um, that's great. What kind of wounds have you got? Okay, well, let's take a good look at her first. Okay, so she's got flimsy clothes. That bodes well. What are your skills, hon? You're bad at melee. You're a good marksman, however. Compared with Milton, who... Uh, hmm. I say we make them a hunting party. And I say we give her a spear and have her practice on a deer. So that meat will soon appear. And then we'll say, here, here! Because this meat doesn't look too queer. And it's suitable for peer because deer is not a fear to be enjoying. I did. <laughs> that was dumb rhyming there. Uh, anyway. What else can you do? Okay, speechcraft. That's probably the most important thing you can do. Because our guy has no speech potential. Well, he has a little less speech potential. I should be a little kind to him. Alright. What else do we need to know about you at the moment? Also optimistic. Okay, you give us a, a boost to our mood, which is really good and useful. Okay, religious needs fulfilled. Hungry, ugly apparel. Okay, so you're in good spirits, good. But we need to do something about your lacerations in that, hon. Construction is gonna... Okay, I'll have a go. So, what are we doing here? So we were working on a research hut before we were so rudely interrupted by our person in need of help here. Let's, uh, let's actually reform this room here a second. So that the only way in is through a door in the side of our first bedroom. I think that's a good idea. We shall see. Can I... can I please just have you construct that door? No? Oh well, that's fine. Uh, botany. Your botany skill is not any better than mine. As a matter of fact, yeah, you're both equal to each other. So I'll actually have you both focus on cutting trees down. Um, actually, no, I'll have Milton focus on cutting trees down while you focus on construction because you're pretty equal to him. Also, don't have him treat you because he's going to botch that. I'm pretty sure of it. Don't forget to replace everything since you took it away. Uh, there we go. All right. And again, turn animal handling off for the moment, because it does not matter. We have nothing to mine at the moment, so that's not really worth considering. Crafting, don't worry about it. Smithing, don't worry about it. Carpentry and tailoring, again, don't worry about it. Oh, that is one more thing you can do, though. Go convalesce. And just have a loose schedule for the moment, just based around staying alive. Also, are you going to bleed out...
Well, on the off chance that you do, in fact, bleed out, I think I will at least try and treat you. Okay, it probably won't be very successful, but it's worth doing. Especially since we do have some herbs, and that will be very helpful to trying to keep you alive. Unfortunately, this place is just a little too cramped to put another bed. Okay. Any kind of tending of wounds is going to be more helpful than not. He is going to suffer a mood debuff on account of not having a bed to sleep in. Should I worry about that? Hmm. Oh, and he's getting very thirsty and will probably want alcohol soon. He has a little more energy. Once it gets down to five, I'm going to send him to bed. Okay. I'm not actually going to have him deconstruct it. I'm not going to actually have him deconstruct that table, but... This is necessary, I think. This is necessary to getting him to sleep. Don't actually deconstruct it, man. Don't actually de... Eh, stop. Stop. Ah! Okay, I'm just gonna have you do that. Just stand here until you collapse. There we go. So we still need to get a bed, but... Things are looking up. Things are looking real up at the moment. So while Melton takes a nap, we'll have Emelina Shackleford. I wonder if she's going to be any relative of Rusty Shackleford. A real person, if I'm told true, and not just somebody Dale Gribble from King of the Hill made up. Not that it matters at the moment. Okay. What does matter is getting is closing out this episode with at least one good and useful thing for our next colonist. And the good and useful thing we'll be doing for her is putting a bed in the place that we're building for her. That takes precedence over these things.
out that one first. Now this one. Things are coming together. Milton's like, hey, welcome in. Now, if we're going to make this thing work, we have to get you a room, and we have to get some production up here. Because we need a few things around here. First of all, we need to think through how we're going to defend ourselves, how we're going to provide glory to this place. Because, you know, I want to make something that lasts out here. I lost my folks. To which Emelina is like, I don't know how she'd say it, but... I lost mine too. Thank you for taking me in. I don't know what the hell I would have done if... if you hadn't helped. If somebody hadn't helped. So she's idle at the moment. What's the thing for that? Uh, so the reason that she's idle is because we need to construct that door. But barring that, okay, actually, is it fortuitous that I've done what I've done? Uh, no, because I still need to put a roof on this. Please stop eating raw food. There surely has to be something cookable down there. Focus on making food, hon. Surely we have enough to do that with. Okay, now we do. Okay, so since your botanies are both horrid... It really doesn't matter who I have haul things to the stockpile. But, so therefore I'm making the arbitrary choice to force uh, Milton to harvest red currants and Emelina to haul things to the stockpile. While Emelina builds her new room. So now that they have something to do, because Milton so kindly rescued Emelina, and hopefully gave her a new lease on life, because he remembered this is something that we do in the Restitutionist Church. This is what we do. People help each other when they're in desperate straits. Not to mention, again, this is a lonely world, too. Therefore, they're going to make a restitutionist colony here, I think. You can't have kids in this game yet, unfortunately. You can't have kids in RimWorld either, which really... kind of makes me feel a bit empty and sad. Never mind, though. Alright, before we get off, though... Before we get off, though, let us be thankful that we now have a bedroom. We'll go ahead and put those work tables back in, because those are going to be important to our further 
uh, to our further, what am I thinking, to our further development so that we can actually develop something worthwhile. But there is one more thing that we're going to do before we close out the game. On kind of a cliffhanger, because we will have somebody trying to take Emelina away from us. So let's learn about our new colonist whom we've got here. Let us learn her backstory. Emelina Shackelford, a spinning innkeep. Emelina was known for the crustiest pie pastry in... Let me try and read that. That's Welsh, or it's trying to be Welsh. Fake Welsh, maybe. For the crustiest pie pastry in... Knuk... Knuk Park i Morfa, I believe is how you say that. Knuk Park i Morfa. Emelina was known for the crustiest pie pastry in Knuk Park i Morfa, and poured a generous pitcher of ale to boot. Jovial and fair, she never hesitated to knock a few thick heads together if fights broke out either. After the apocalypse, Emelina learned all about flax for clothing, bedding, bread sacks, ropes, and all. Or is that and oil? I think that's an oil. Anyway, she was soothed by retting and rolling, scutching and spinning. Emelina had a steady hand and eyes the pale flaxen blue of a cloudless summer sky. She is a restitutionist zealot who requires considerable religious activity to stay happy, does not drink alcohol, and therefore her need for it never changes, and requires a church of restitution shrine or chapel for religious observances. Also, she has the following perks. She is a sun seeker who comes alive when the sun is shining. A few golden rays is all it takes to bring out the best in her. I presume that means that she gets a mood bonus from seeing the sun. She's a heliophile. And she is elf shot. Excruciating back pains that Emelina endures were doubtless caused by fairy arrows. What had she done to deserve such misery? That's a bit of our backstory on our young friend here, Emelina Shackelford. All right. And in the time that it took me to say all that, we now have our research bench. And we will begin to research things to improve the quality of life in this colony, to make it worth living in and worth defending. We almost have our bench up. And before we go to bed, I'm going to set this thing to produce meat as long as we have it. And what's more, we're also going to equip these guys to do some hunting. To that point, we're going to give them their first bit of training. And that is going to involve hunting this here deer. It's trying to run away. But they are getting a lot of fun out of it. Oh, yes! Can't wait for venison steaks. Only kings used to eat this well, ma'am. Oh, I know! I know, Milton! I am truly excited to put a spear through this thing and cook up some nice... some nice flanks of deer. Oh, yes. Oh, we did it! Want to go for another one? Oh, yeah! Let's get on! Ah! Oh, he's running! He's running! Oh, we got this. We got this, ma'am. Yes! Come on! Get the deer! Come on, it should slow down a little. At least it should, according to medieval dynasties' theory of hunting. 
That's another game that I've kind of enjoyed. Yeah! Come on! Shoot it! Oh man! Milton! Watch where you're aiming! Sorry! It runs so fast! Don't worry about that other one! It'll keep in the snow! Alright! Nicely done, ma'am. Okay. And having captured their game, and having something worth butchering when they get back, I think this is a good place to end for the evening. Who knows what's going to happen here, but I can tell you what has already happened. We have a little courtyard here. We have the wherewithal to make a great deal of meal here. We still have plenty of red currants, and as long as it's winter, cold storage works well for keeping these deer carcasses from rotting. We still have a red currant pie, and we have a new settler with our present situation, things are really looking up. To that point, we're going to have everybody go to bed. In just a bit here, and once they do, we're going to call it a night. Thank you very much for joining me, and I really hope you will come back, because I really do want to see how this turns out. I am going to enjoy that monastery I'm building as well, because the military tactics I've required to make that work have truly been interesting. But this playthrough has been fun. I've enjoyed it greatly. I hope you've enjoyed having a look at it. Alright, let's save Rotherheith. And with that, I think it's time to call it a night. Thank you very much for joining me, folks. Love you all very much. And we will begin with Rotherheith when we come back next. Peace.